In this section, we start our study of what are called path integrals. The situation here is that we have a curve, or what I'll call a path, in the xy plane. And this path is going to be uh, a path between two points, let's say A and B in the xy plane. And it could doesn't have to be a function, so let's draw it like this. This the idea here again. That, so I'll call this C for curve, but we're going to think of this as a path, and we want to think of this. The reason I call it a path is because we want to think of it as the path of a particle that moves from the point A to the point B. So in other words, it's not just a curve; it also has an orientation to it from A to B. And in addition to this, let's suppose we also have a function that's defined on some domain. So I'm going to just sketch kind of very lightly here, some like a blob here, but this domain we'll call D, um, that contains the entire curve. So this is a region of the xy plane that, again, contains the entire curve, C, or the entire path, and defined on this set D, or on this domain D, there's a function, we'll say, so a function F, and F, of course, assigns a height to every point in the entire domain D, but what we want to do is restrict the function f to this path, to the path C, and then just draw the graph of the function f that sits above this curve. Okay, so maybe above A, maybe the point that's assigned by f has height, this height here, and as we move along, the idea is that if you follow the function, you will see that the curve, above the curve, there will be traced out a surface here. And this portion of this surface, so this, this is a surface, which again is traced out by a function. So in, in some sense here, this part right here is the graph of the function restricted, so that sits directly above the curve down below, C. And what we want to do is we want to try to uh, integrate this function along this curve. Okay, so we have to understand what this means geometrically before we can actually do it. And so the geometric idea is that, okay, that along this curve or this path, this function assigns a height. And if we connect these lines vertically, like I've done in this picture, then the resulting geometric image here is a surface that's kind of been twisted and it's waving through space in some sense, but um, it's a portion of what we call a cylinder when we were studying um, surfaces back in the previous chapter. And so this is a portion of a cylinder that sits directly above the path C, and we want to try to compute the area, the surface area of this portion of the cylinder. And so to do this, in our mind, what we can do is we can think of kind of taking this surface out of its current space, so out of 3D space, and ironing it out in some sense. And so I'll come over here. So we're going to take our curve, or our path, and we are going to straighten that path out. Remember this, this path started at A, and went to B. <clears throat> and then above this path, we had our surface. Okay, and as you iron this out, now what you have is something that looks a lot like a calc 1 or calc 2 integral problem where to find the surface area of this surface, again that's what we want to compute here, the surface area of this surface we just compute the integral we compute the integral in the calc 1 sense. Now here's the difference so this is going to be, we're going to write this as the integral along the the path C and remember this comes with an orientation right we oriented this path to go from A to B um, of the function. So the function here is a function of two variables, f of x, y. But the question now becomes, what do we integrate this with respect to? Okay, and what we need to do is, if we were going to chop this up into pieces, like, again, thinking back to calc 1 or calc 2, we would partition our curve. So you partition your curve into a number of points to kind of chop it up, right? And so you can just think of all these little intersections here as the partition, the image of the partition after we've ironed it out. 
And then what we'll do to compute the integral is we'll approximate with these boxes, right? But the question becomes, so we're going to integrate this up and try to find the area of this space. The height is obviously given by the function, but what about this down here? And it turns out that this is a tiny piece of arc, arc length because as we've ironed out our curve, there are certain areas where even if these are evenly spaced with respect to some kind of parameter, um, maybe right here, for example, this spot when we iron it out might be longer than this portion, right? And so we need to integrate this entire thing, this entire function with respect to arc length. Okay, and so that's the main idea of a path integral. Um, but before we do examples, we're going to want to know how to actually compute these. So this is the philosophical idea. To compute these, we need to be able to represent our curve by a parametric function or a vector function. So we are always going to assume that our curve comes with a vector function and that it's parameterized in such a way that the beginning and ending points are given by a equals r of a for our parametric function or our vector function and B, is, capital B, the end point, is R of little b. And so we have this interval in the t direction. Now, in this scenario, we know exactly what the arc length element is. We've studied this a few times, so um, maybe I'll write one more thing first. But we can remember that uh, this curve is living in the xy plane. It's parameterized in the xy plane. And so, um, I'm writing this completely wrong. Our parametric functions with respect to t, but it parametrizes the component functions. So we have x of t, y of t, and then we know that ds, this is just the arc length element, this is given by x dot squared plus y dot squared dt. Okay, another way to think of this though is that this is the length of r dot of t dt. All right, so you might remember this from our previous studies that the length of r dot, right, is this portion of the arc length element. Okay, so let's plug this all back into our scenario here. So the path integral of our function f of x, y, ds along the path c, this is going to be computed as the integral from a to b. This is now just a calc 1 or calc 2 integral the integral from a to b of f of r of t. Okay, so r of t is going to give us the points x, y that go into the function. And then we need to integrate this up with respect to arc length, but let's use this version right here. So the length of r dot of t dt. And so this is the formula for computing, for computing the path integrals. And it turns out, so I, I did all this setup in two-dimensional space, so for a curve that just lived in the plane, a portion of the plane, but if you write this out in terms of r and length of r dot like this, then actually this formula scales to any dimension that you want. So our curve could live in, of course we're not going to go to too many dimensions, but our curve could live in three dimensions and this path integral has the exact same meaning um, in three dimensions except it's harder for us to picture in our minds what the, what the picture might look like.